part of the work uh, done with my PhD thesis. And to start with, uh, I'll start with some uh, informal introduction. So first of all, conformal blocks in the classical sense are certain uh, vector bundles which are defined on uh, the stack parameterizing curves and which are uh, attached to to certain simple groups over large bracket close feet. And they satisfy very nice properties. Uh, the word twisted is because I want to replace G with uh, another group, let's call it uh, curly H, which is defined over uh, cur curve X, and so it will not anymore be a uh, constant group, but a uh, twisted one, and which will be defined in terms of covering data. And this will produce then a vector bundle on the, the Hurwitz stack parametrizing coverings of curves. And this uh, will generalize the notion of conformal blocks, will have similar properties. And in order to be, let's say, more precise and to motivate why people might be interested in this, I will now set some notation and start. But this is the idea. So we have, for constant groups, there is a way to cook out vector bundles on nice modular spaces. Well, if the group is a bit more complicated, um, can we do similar things? So let me start with some setting. So everything would be carried out over an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. And um, we fix also G over K uh, simply connected and simple algebraic group. You can imagine S to N. And it's the algebra we did not get. Just uh, So let me explain how to uh, introduce classical. So classical conformal blocks. Um, this can be introduced in different ways, and I will explain it both ways. So the first one is a geometric approach. So if we fix a smooth and projective curve, uh, for K, of course, um, we can, um, we are interested in studying the stack of G bundles over this fixed curve. Uh, this is a nice uh, algebraic stack, which is smooth, so in particular, um, we can do some geometry in it. And the Picard, uh, the Picard of this uh, stack has been studied and has been shown to be isomorphic to Z. So this is, uh, for example, Laszlo and Zorga. And so it is a morphic to Z, and let's call theta the positive generator. So in the case G is equal to SLN, theta is exactly the, the determinant of the cohomology of the vector bundles which I'm parametrizing. And this is true for, other, for many other cases. Um, so it's positive, we can compute the, the global sections, and this is where the shift of conformal blocks uh, play a role. In fact, we can say that um, we can define the shift of conformal blocks um, attached to G, 
as the vector bundle um, on Mg, which is defined by this assignment, we have um, attached to uh, the curve x the space of global section of theta, or better, the dual. And we can also consider its positive, uh, positive powers of it. So the shift of conformal blocks, if we want to do a level, we have off level L, well, compute the L tensor power, the global section of the L, L tensor uh, power of um, theta. And of course, this definition a priori could not make sense. I mean, you have many things to prove. And um, this was, uh, let's say, um, people who worked on this were originally Tsushira, Ueno, and Yamada at the end of the 80s. And then uh, also Bobil and Laszlo worked on that in 94. And also five things. Um, so this is how uh, shift conformal blocks can be introduced, but uh, the original uh, definition, which is due to Tsushiga Ueno Yamada, comes from representation theory. In particular, um, we have that if we start with, um, let's say, we take n representation which are irreducible and of level at most L of well, G of the Lie algebra G, then there is a way uh, to associate to this a vector bundle on Mg n bar, which is called the sheaf of conformal blocks attached to the representation we want to be n. And when I say there is a way to do it, this is due, this is um, in terms of representation of uh, affine the algebras. And I'm not going to explain now how this is defined in this term because I will uh, explain to you how uh, I did it, which is a generalization of the standard construction, so I think it makes um, more sense to see it afterwards. And this, uh, but I'm going to give you now, sketch the properties. So given these vector bundles, um, how, what are the features? Computing the rank of these 
bundles. Um, another feature that uh, they have is that if we see them, I would just not write always the representation put in there. So these bundles on M0N, that's considered now, uh, on when I consider Gina zero curves, they are globally generated. This was the result of Pakudin. I think 2012 or something. And so um, this implies that the, well, you can see that the return classes are uh, base point three. They are net. And so we can use this uh, conformal blocks divisor, which are exactly the first gen classes of um, uh, first gen classes of these vector space of these vector bundles to deduce information on the geometry of M zero n and then uh, also of M G n for higher general. And um, so this is uh, uh, and since they arise from representation theory, they are they have a lot of uh, combinatorial properties that one can use. So this means that we can use uh, these vector bundles to study um, the geometry of of the, uh, the geometry of of this space. And this is what, uh, for example, Berkale gives me um, to copy the IRC and also other people work on these things. Mm, sorry. Yes? I couldn't quite see what you were. Global generation means that, that what's made for free? The, if I take a divisor, the determinant of these vector bundles, okay. so the first chain class, just see, see that, is that see. it's a C1? Yeah. So, so one can study the net cones, and for example, there are these questions of whether uh, the net cones are, uh, is polyhedral or not. And they provide um, nice, uh, so one can uh, wonder for which levels the, these, the divisor associated to these vector bundles vanish or not. So in case one can find uh, some criteria for them to vanish, one can have hope, okay, we don't have so many line bundles which are NEF, so maybe there is hope to have a polyhedral uh, NEF cone. But in case, you know, we, have, we can produce many, many line bundles, maybe this is an evidence that the NEF cone is not polyhedral. And the last feature I want to mention now is the fact that uh, when I consider the, well, the trivial representation of this, uh, the algebra, then the vector bundle of this trivial representation actually descends uh, to uh, mg without marking point. So it's independent on the choice, on the point that I chose, and uh, in particular, if we can descend to mg, actually this is MG bar, and uh, on MG is isomorphic to the sheet of conformal blocks, which I define in terms of global sections of line bundles. Isomorphic to... Um, the VL here is the place to call VL of V1 up to VN? Yeah, so if I take uh, all of them to be the trivial representations. If you take them all to be trivial. Yeah. So n can vary. You see that it doesn't depend on which points you fix. So it's independent on the choice of the mark points. So you can descend from ng n to mg. And, and you see that, uh, let's say, let's not consider uh, the boundary, but where uh, this uh, is defined, it actually coincides with the, with the shape of vector bundles of conformal blocks defined in terms of. Um, uh, global section of the theta divisor. And actually, of course, this is a huge <laughs> theorem which can be attributed to these people somehow. 
And I want to mention what, is the, what are the main uh, ingredients to get this identification. Because from these, uh, since these, uh, say, ingredients were generalized to the twisted case, this would be the starting point of the generalization also of the notion of twisted conformal blocks. Other questions? Okay. I think you're, you're trying to get to a little bit. Could, could you just say a word on what's the geometric interpretation of the whole thing? You, you're looking at bundles with parabolic structure, those points? Yes, this can be, yes. But when, when I don't take, when I take not the trigger representation? Not, yeah, the, the general. Yes, so this will be, uh, yes, so this will be the same thing as H0 of parabolic bundles where the structure. Yes, with the parabolic structure is given by the weights given by these representations. That's what that's what I'm missing. So, and you would just the VIs are irreducible representations. They are irreducible representations. So they're specified by some weight. Yeah, so they are defined by some weights, and if you have and there are a lot um, more weights than parabolic types. Yes, yeah, so if you have a parabolic, uh, if you have a parabolic bundle. Um, Suppose you just have one point, so you have a par uh, parabolic subgroup, and then I think you have to take the weight which are um, in the complementary of the weight, the defined... Uh, the number of parabolic subgroups is finite, yes. due to the rank or something. Yeah. The number of weights is infinite. But I, I have... A, so I take... Yes, so the choice of representations will correspond to the choice of the parabolic that you choose. <coughs> the number of parabolics is finite, independent of the level. Yeah, it will mean that... Um, or, or is this the notion of par parabolic that depends for the Katsumuni, it depends on the level? You take the, the slice corresponding to that level, you project to the weight lattice for the, the slice. Okay. Take all take the sub 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 collection of weights at that level in the gas yes. model. Project it to the uh, to the finite algebra. Yes. Okay. You get the weight for the finite algebra. Yeah. Really? That gives you a line bundle on the full flat variety for that law. So parabolic structure is full. It doesn't depend on the choice of the weight. It's just the full flat variety for the algebra. Uh, so, so when you're writing down the line bundle now on the modular parabolic bundles, you have the, the, the data divisor condition plus you have to choose a, a, a line bundle on each of the flat varieties at each of the points. So that, that, that representation will tell you which line bundle you're yeah. choosing on the Because line in line. parabolic, you don't have Z. It's an extension of Z by the... By the... By, 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 the, by, by the log. By, yeah. Part, right? You don't have this anymore. It's an extension of Z in the parabolic way. In the parabolic so the VIs um, do not specify the parabolic structure. They specify the line... The, the line bundle. The line bundle. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> also, yeah. Okay. So, but, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, because we, this is not anymore true. This is not. It's an extension of Z, but it's not Z. Yeah, the level tells Z you which, which, which element in the Z you are. Z plus a copy of the weight lattice for each point. For, yes. for each point, exactly. Okay. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, and I think this one on parabolic, uh, I, I'm thinking who's the reference. Um, for sure, Las, I think uh, Lazar and Zogia worked with that. In the so I want to um, so now see that this is true. So what are the main ingredients to see that A is equal to B? And uh, mm, so to the main ingredients would say the uniformization uh, theorem for Bungie, which 
which essentially tells that um, once we fix a point of our curve, then let's call G A the um, restriction of, let's say, G times the affine curves. And this uh, we left on the affine Grassmannian of G at the point P. And the uniformization theorem says that some Gx will be isomorphic to the quotient stack uh, of the uh, of the affine Grassmannian by this uh, by this group GA. The groups that the function. And um, so this is proven by, uh, originally by, let's say, um, hard, um, uh, by Harder in C7, the point-wise, and then Mobil and Laszlo proved them, proved it uh, for SLN, and finally this uh, in the general setting by Greenfield and Simpson. So these are like four. Um, why this is the main ingredient? Well, because the line bundles of the fine grass manian um, they uh, they are described. Uh, in terms of representation of a finite algebra, and it was done by Kumar, independently by Kumar and Mathieu at the end of the 80s, and um, and so we can see that uh, line bundles on Banji X would just be line bundles on this affine Grassmannian equipped with, with the linear GA linearization and so also the global sections will essentially be invariants of global section of the light bundles on, on the fine Grassmannian and so these two notions are related in this way um, so um, <coughs> I mentioned this because uh, how to go from the classical case to the twisted case and what is for precisely the twisted case well, as I said, I want to replace group G with group H over X, which um, is nice. And for us, nice would just mean I just say these words, but then I will replace them with something more comprehensible. This is being parahoric Bruhatis group over X. So this means that this group, um, so it's smooth and affine over X, the algebraic group which is smooth and affine over X, and which is, so on the generic fiber would be semi-simple, and then there will be finitely many points on which this, um, uh, this group is described in terms of, um, well, Bruhatids, so parahoric groups in terms of Bruhatids. So, given this, uh, this uh, group, which are not then in general constant, the Papas and Rappaport conjecture that there will be. Uh, uh, that we could still have um, uniformization, uniformization for by hx, still when x is a smooth curve, then it's possible to describe the Picard group, and if it's possible to have conformal blocks attached to this. And um, the first two questions, they were answered by Heinold in 
And this is the starting point of, let's say, my work. So how do you actually describe, is there, is there a way to describe conformal blocks attached to these type of groups? And so the goal somehow of today is to stress yes, so is to construct uh, this uh, vector bundle um, in the case in which H arises from coordinates, uh, from simply coordinates. And now I'm going to then explain this setting. This is why I didn't, I don't want to mention too much about this condition because the groups we are working with are easier to, to describe. I'm sorry, so what did Heino prove? He proved that, so first of all, um, uh, ban HX, so there is an uniformization theorem, we can describe it as a quotient step of depending on the point we choose. Oh, and, and calculate the, the And calculate the car to be an extension of Z by the product of the characters of the groups at the ramification point, so at the points where the group is not reductive. So it's uh, similar to the parabol parabolic case, but uh, so you have an ex extension of Z. What happens if you don't allow points, if you take your uh, group scheme to be just a twisted form of G, some inner twisted form of G? Uh, you mean it's everywhere? It's everywhere, just a form of G, but it's globally twisted. Uh, it's okay. I think, oh, well, you will have... I think, I think that this will just be a isomorphic to Z, because you will not have ramification points. Yeah, right. So this would appear, for example, right, if you have a, let me see, is it, so if I have, a, for example, a Galois covering, which is not ramified. Yeah, you can twist by a finite Galois covering, yeah. but you can also twist by something which yeah, is yeah, not yeah. finite, right? So yeah, I don't know in the Galois, not finite. Okay. Yeah. So in the, if you take a finite Galois covering, then you, you still have these things, and this will be then Z. Because the, the obstruction, I mean, you have to, so you would extend Z with certain characters on the point on which the group is not reductive, and now it's the group is always reductive. Yeah, the group is so, always reductive. So you will have still Z, and you still have the uniformization. So the fact that you have a group, for example, yeah, the fact that you don't have ramification is not important for this. Yeah, you can, you can, you have this uh, situation as well. But I don't know if you take if you twist it, you see it. Have to think about the. Yeah. But, that's not but they are allowed. That's not going to give a new kind of um, conformal blocks, though, because there's no unif no consistent way of twisting over all rings at the same time. That's right, yeah. You, you won't be able but to. But you will have maybe five You can ask me this question, but not that. Yeah. 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 yeah, it won't yeah, make yeah. sense over the NG. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. But <coughs> yeah. So now I want to identify uh, what is, okay, finally, what is now the twisted setting. They work with. So, so we first we fix gamma to be a finite sigma group, and rho to be an action of gamma on the simple group we fixed at the beginning, and then if we have uh, a gamma covering of curves, uh, so which is a uh, log over. Covering, which is, for example, which is ramified or not, it can be possibly ramified, and they call R the branch locus of X, then we can hook up a group, um, the group that's interesting, which are, we are interested in, uh, arising the following way. We can pull back uh, the constant group to the cover, take its value restriction on Q. Here, gamma x because it's x by a row and by a q, and take the gamma variance of it. And this will still be an affine smooth group over x, which is not in general constant. As you were saying before, if there's no ramification, it will be locally constant. But um, 
but if it's uh, if there is a mitigation at the mitigation point, very bad things can happen. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not requiring your action to be in a, just any action. This one? Yeah. Yeah. It's just any map. Yeah. No, I, you asked for if it's inner or not. Yeah. No, but I'm going to make a remark on that. Okay. Yeah. So, or I can since you asked, I I will mention this. Um, so, if the action is inner, so if rho was coming from so map from rho to g from rho to g, then Balanchine and Sechadri proved that. Um, Uh, I think this was in uh, 2015, maybe. So they, they published it. So they only published it. They proved that every split parahoric group at this group arise from four brains. Meaning, so if you take any uh, split parahoric group at this, meaning outside, so many which is. Uh, really constant on a certain open, on a certain uh, the curve, then they all arise in terms of coverings, of course, allowing them to be any finite uh, group, not necessarily sequence, but the action is in there. So here, the question is, um, so we have that uh, somehow, so the, the split groups, so it's called split parahoid uh, group, group, they fit inside the ones arising from coverings, and this it is under all the paraphoric Ruhatis groups. And we already know that this is not, um, it's the strict inequality. It's a strict inclusion. In fact, we can date, uh, for example, uh, acting on SLN, place a near matrix to the inverse of the dual, and if n is greater than 3, greater than 3, this is not an inner, an inner uh, action. So we will have something which is not split. But we don't know about this. So um, it's actually, I think it's actually would be interesting to find out if the groups arising from coverings, so which are the groups arising from coverings? Can we have some groups which are parahoric buhatis, but which do not arise from coverings? And this, I, I don't know. Abdul. Did it took you too far from your talk to my what a parahoric is? Um, so this means I can. No. Um, well, I will not give the precise definition though, because so I want to say it's just um, so. Uh, so uh, on the generic fiber, this is uh, semi-simple for me. But then, um, if I take so, this would mean that on a certain open. This would be semi-simple, and if I take a point which is not in this open, and I take the uh, restriction of A to the formal neighborhood of this point, this is this, um, and I take a OP point. This will sit inside here, and this inclusion is given by it's a parabolic subgroup of this would be just H of K of t, and this is a, would be a simple, a semi-simple group, so I can, I can work with, uh, I can take paraphoric subgroups. That's what I'm asking, what is paraphoric? It's described in terms of buildings, Ruhatit's buildings, and I don't know exactly, I mean, I, mean, I, I work with the ones arising from all Contains, contains No, but this is not the only thing you, no. you want. I mean, I know parabolic is to Yahoo, yes, Boreal is to, no, parabo it's parabolic is to Boreal, but I just don't know what they, exactly what they are. So I think that, the, uh, how do I say? Um, so. Is it something that looks locally like that? Is that, is that? The, the unique local model for the power points that you get? No, 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 no. This is the question. I don't know. I don't know if the. I don't know if it looks like that local. This is exactly the question. It's defined in terms of certain. Uh, so it's defined 
um, so you, the idea is the following. You have an affine a curve, and you take out a certain number of, and you, you have a group which is defined on a curve, and you know how the group is on the open, on, on the curve without a point. Maybe you know it's that. And you want to see, okay, how do I actually extend this point, this, this group? I know what's on the puncture disk. How do I extend it to the disk? To get what? A sheaf? To get now a sheaf, an affine group scheme over your curve. And, and, uh, and according to certain choices you make, like which apartment of the building that you choose, there is a theory of, of Bruhaldis which says you can describe this. So making a choice of the apartment of a facet, you can describe this. There is a unique way to extend the group from the fine curve to the, to the old curve. But I don't know the details of that. So the extension depends on some discrete data type given by uh, something the, in the, the building, Gruhatid's building, yes. So this is how it's... Uh, Yeah, so I, I think it, it's not uh, it's not very easy to work with. I mean, I don't find it easy to work with them in the most general cases. This is why I, I also think it uh, would be nice to to show at a certain point that these two notions, if these two notions are actually equivalent, then one could work with coverings instead of working with the, all the theory of Bruhatis groups and Bruhatis buildings because it's you know. Mm -hmm. Or at least locally. Yeah, yeah, locally, locally. yes, yes, yes. But I don't know locally. I mean, also the description is local. So the theorem is actually, all this theory of paraphoric groups arises on, it's a local theory. You want to extend the group from a puncture disk to the disk itself. And you say once you fix some data on the Bruhatitz buildings, there is a unique way to do it. So these are theorems of uh, Bruhatitz in this setting. certain moduli space. And of course we cannot, since this group depend on covering data, well, the moduli space will work when it will be the space parameterizing covering, so the Hurwitz stack, and these will just be parameterizing gamma coverings of curves where the bottom curve, I fix the genus of the bottom curve and actually I fix some verification information so that also the genus upstairs uh, will be fixed. And then I fix endpoints which are outside the ramification locus. And since in the classical case, I would like to see how the sheet buffer blocks behave under the generation of the covering, I also allow, I also work with um, actually a partial compactification of the Hurwitz stack, meaning I allow the curve, the curves to be nodal, but I I want the um, uh, the nodes do not intersect the ramification locus. So this one is the group is there. And so X is, is a stable curve? Yeah, so it's stably marked. So you have the X with the ramification and the points that I fix. This is stable. Mm -hmm. Where, I mean, yeah, so the automorphism of this, so R should be equal to R and this point. Yeah. This point. Well, our union piece is stable. Yeah, I mean, I have to, it's stable, but. The but it is still broken. But they still broken. Ramification and, and Ramification mark and mark points. <coughs> so somehow, um, I could say that. But X was the piece alone may not may fail to be stable. 
X itself without the mark points? X with the P's. Without R. Yeah, they, it could. But they fix also the R's. Yeah. So this, yeah. Okay. But, yes. So this is what I have. So this is, um, yeah, so, um, so now I want to um, show, given this group and this stack, how to construct one of the fibers. So how to construct a uh, fiber of so conformal blocks and what are the properties. So. Oh, I went to two to four, maybe. I don't know. This is the conformal blocks. And I'm going to express to explain how to do it just fiber wise because uh, so it's first of all fix a covering. Let's assume it's it's um, of smooth curves and we have to fix a point P next, so the ramification. And now we have um, V, which is a useful representation of letter L of uh, well let's write V as of H at the point P or just of H at P. And I want to call this chief of the algebra H, curly H. So I want to give, to start, so <coughs> sorry. given this um, data, I want to cook out a vector space um, of finite dimension. Over a case, of course, because this will be just um, a k point of my hobbies. Um, to do this, uh, I will actually erase here because I more space So we first of all have of course the exact sequence which defines the point P and we have um, the uh, k algebra of the coordinate ring of the fine curve, then we have the, uh, the completion, so the coordinate ring of the formal neighborhood around the point itself, and their intersection is just, of course, up to choice the uniformizer, the ring of non series. And we can also can consider the equivalent of Lie algebras. So this will be the shape of Lie algebra restricted to the fine curve. Then we will have the shape of, I will just not write the P, Lie algebra uh, restricted to the uh, formal disk. And somehow they are both subalgebra of the Lie algebra on the puncture disk. I'm going to see them as K modules now. So this will be all Lie algebras. Uh, in the top one is on the FN curve, and the bottom one is on the. On the yeah, so. On this is this, on the middle one is, is the. The, is the middle one is on the puncture, the bottom one is on the puncture. This is on the. Yeah. And on. Um, So the first thing to uh, to define this vector bundle is to actually extend centrally the shape of the algebras. So the first thing would be to extend centrally HF. And this is done by using the killing form of G and the residue pairing on the residue pairing group uh, L, and um, somehow we want to see that um, we observe that HL is actually isomorphic, although not canonically, to the tensor product G with L. And this is because the point we chose was outside the ramification. So the covering of the point totally splits, and the choice of one of the components will give you this one. 
So this uh, construction somehow is equivalent to the classical construction of um, central extension in terms of cut moody the algebra, uh, but it's independent of actually on these isomorphisms. So we can do it independently. And um, the second step is that we want to do from D, which is a representation of uh, HP, uh, representation of this D algebra. And, um, and this is, thanks to this remark, we can use the classical, we can use the classical theory of Katsumi the algebra. And, um, Since I, I still didn't write it down, 
So how to prove, let me give a sketch of the proof. Um, so we first of all, well, of course we have to, first of all we define it for families, and this can be done uh, by using, this would just be true locally, but you can use this end. So first of all we define it for families. And then you prove that it's a coherent module. And also this is, uh, comes essentially from uh, the fact that this representation is integrable. And uh, I don't know, like the h one of the sheaf of Lie algebra, h is finite. And the second one, it should be enough to have uh, uh, projectively flat connections on this on this on this on this coherent module. If I have a coherent module which is projectively flat, it's then a vector bundle. Right? If I have a flat if I have if I have a okay if I have a flat connection, I mean not projective, if and on a coherent module, then it's it's locally free. Because if I go, I mean, this I can I can how do you say? I can argue by saying that it's locally. coherent as a D module. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But and I know the theorem. That, um, but what I can show, so now I can erase this. What I can show, and to do this, I use the cyclic, the, the fact that the group is cyclic, is that um, I just fix what yeah. This is um, this is actually quick with a projective flat connection, but with log singularities along the boundary. Uh, and to show that I have this uh, project, uh, this uh, connection, which is the generalization of the uh, by uh, connection, I use the fact that my proof was simply. But I think it's just a technical you know, the way I wrote the proof works for cyclic groups, but I'm pretty sure that if the group is not cyclic, the monodromy group are always in the cyclic groups, I can reduce to this case. But I can, so, uh, this shows that, so this shows that this is a vector bundle on the open set. And to conclude, to show that actually a vector bundle on the on the all stack, I prove factorization rules, which I'm now going to write down in five minutes. So, so we also have I mentioned that before, so factorization rules. Write this in a more algebraic geometry point to be, and he used this connection to 
activities. And I think also the also Zorga, so he has this expository um, article on, it's called uh, the, for the formula of Berlin, so the Berlin formula. Mm -hmm. And he also used this use flash connection. So this is what, but maybe you can tell me, I don't know, afterwards. So, so the way I, I do and the way that some people can be done is the following. So if I have now a gamma form range and I assume x to have a node in x, in small x, then I can take uh, a normalization of the curve. I assume I'm just with on, on point. And this one will be marked by p x plus and x minus, so the two points. And now the factorization rule tells that if I that the um, space of conformal blocks which are attached to a certain representation of H to the P is actually decomposed as the sheet of conformal blocks, the space of conformal blocks which are attached to V at the point P, W at X plus and W star, which is the dual of W at X minus, where the sum runs over all the reduced representation of the algebra of H at the point X. So if you observe, okay, this can also be done in families when, of course, we can normalize the family. And so observe that the left-hand side deals with nodal curves, and the right-hand side can deal, suppose this curve is irreducible to, um, they are smooth, so it's a vector model which lies on the, it's a fiber of a vector model lying on the open curve step, parameterizing uh, coverings of uh, smooth curves, and using some versality argument, we can then deduce we can deduce the fact that our shift is locally free also on the boundary, because the, the universal deformation will be just be decomposed uh, as direct sum of certain bundles, which are then free because they were defined on the on the open uh, orbit stack. So the factorization rules, besides giving you a way to um, Besides being the first step to have an induction on the genus, then compute the rank of these bundles, because this would be something of like G, and this would be G minus 1. Also, can be a tool to show that actually the bundles will have our local. As you we were saying, I don't know the other approach, but maybe I, I find it very nice because you have this double thing. And I think I'm over time, so I won't maybe stop here. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Any more questions? Is there any special property of these twisted guys if you change the the, the symmetry group? The covering group? I mean these factorization rules are you keep the the curve type the same and then to generate the, the covers, but what if you change the cover? Oh, I didn't think about that. Okay. So you're saying if I have a, I don't. There will be induced orbit, orbit spaces from one group to another. Yeah, so you say if I have some sort of way to change my groups, I then have map between the orbit stacks. Right. And so if I construct these two bundles, so is, there any is there any relation? I don't know. I didn't think about there <coughs> the group. That seems to be a new feature here yes. that you wouldn't have in, in, in the in the case. Yeah, the thing, yes. I don't know. I have to think about about that. I I, I think we should, for example, from this like I also met to MGN or for a certain N, not maybe not this one. But so I also don't know what the relationship what the relationship is with the classical ones, and, and this is actually what we are working now with Angela with me. So trying to see if there are. So I believe that the, my shifts, these shifts of conform blocks, are not pullbacks of the standard ones. But so far I don't have any. <laughs> 
Yeah, but what about boundary divisors? I mean, can you, I mean, do you have any global generation? Um, for those? So I have, I don't, I, I don't have it yet. I have a, so a way to improve global generation um, can be done by, so Bobil, for example, showed global generation because he constructed he constructed vector bundles, sorry, these vector bundles in a nice way. So it's easy to, to show that they are globally generated on P1. So if I see, I have the same construction. So I could say, oh, can I use this? Mm -hmm. And the problem is that he really uses the fact, in this case, you have the GA is really, in the case of P1, it will be just G times A1. And in my case, I don't have this. So he used, heavily used this fact. This triviality. This triviality. The and I don't have that. So I have to think if I can modify that or yeah, or try to compute directly some churn classes and see it cannot be globally generated somehow. No, I mean I don't know. I think I think the best I, I yeah, we are now trying to cook out some examples started with curve covers of P1, just fixing, I don't know, Z mod 2Z, covering, giving uh, fixed uh, ramification logs to see how we can do things. But things can get complicated because, yeah, we need to have this property. So in G, so in what I call H, A, here it's concentrated all the new parts because all the ramification points which, is, which are what uh, make a difference between uh, this, the classical case and the twisted case, it's all in here. Because I choose the point P, and it's not in the ramification of this. So this is the complement of so all the ramification. I know that there are some, uh, there is uh, a post lock at Max Planck, he is uh, in Bonn, not Max Planck, he actually constructed certain conformal blocks attached to coverings, fixing ramification points. So his construction, of course, works only when you have ramification. And um, you can, again, work also in that case. So do you have explicit formulas for the dimension, for the rights of these things? Not yet. So, um, no, not yet. <laughs> um, I want to work on that. That's but is it coming up? Yeah, I don't know how much time it will take. So I think I want. But you do have the factorization. I have the fact. Yeah. So this is the like first step. Like the same principle. Yes. The problem. So and then I know that uh, at least in the cyclic case, I can reduce to genus zero. The problem is that my space here is not really compact. I don't get all the. So when you take the compactification, you should usually you allow the nodes and the ramification locus to intersect, and you prescribe that. I mean you require your coverings to be some sort of admissible, so you don't want the action of gamma to be too bad on these nodes. I don't consider all the space. I have something in the middle. And, but I believe that for cyclic groups I can reduce, so the, the genus of the log of these curves can be G, so, so it be one, I have genus zero here. But then- Using the factorization. Yes. But then, if I then want to do computations, since my, uh, since my Lie algebra and representations are defined in terms of the curve upstairs, uh, depending on the group I have on the ramification uh, data I have, the genus upstairs can be not to zero. So I have to understand what is also the genus upstairs to which I, I reduce. And I think in some cases, so I want to try start with P1, two to one cover, see what I get. So using the fusion rings and starting doing this so combinatorics and so on. Do you get anything interesting from my family? Do you, do you, uh, are there cases where these Hobbit schemes are actually compact even before so you don't need to compactify them? Like I mean I know you have you can construct compact families of branch covers of certain types of, of a curve. Yeah, I mean, like the data curves. Like the data curves, yeah. I don't know. But 
Those won't be secret. Oh, maybe, maybe they will be secret. Well, it will be fine secret. Oh, no, because you have to do a root cover of the Jacobian. Yeah. So, because you're saying God. Two set extension. But if I still have. Com you mean without then needing to introduce these nodal curves? Or what do you. I, can you rephrase them? Well, uh, uh, no, because I'm. Okay. <laughs> It's muddled because it's muddled in my head. But, but, um, I think you can actually map MGN to some high Hofitz schemes. So it only ends in the interior, so it never degenerates. Oh. Um, I wonder if that actually allows you to pull back and, and, and you get. Uh. New vector bundles, formal block type vector bundles on MGN itself. I don't know, yeah, okay. So is it, if I have a map from MGN to these whole bits and not the other way around? Or this is what? Right, this is your question. So if I have a map from the stack of curves, to the orbit. Yeah. So if you can take well, the Well, some common yeah. perspective goes Yeah, well, yeah, G, yeah, it's a cover, but then you take the direct image, you'll you end up with a vector bundle on MGM itself. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 now I'm trying to also see these relations between orbits and G. You have maps, you know, source, target, component blocks. In both spaces, uh, are there some relations? And uh, can we write these relations in terms of covering? So one is given by the other one in terms of coverings, because um, for band G, we also for band H, we also have this description. So the stack of H bundles is the same stack. So I also so we have that band H on X will be the same as. The set of gamma G torsor on X tilde, given with a certain local type. So maybe we did some sort of applying this philosophy to um, to the ship conformal blocks. So if I maybe show that in the, I can have some sort of gamma action. It's possible to define a gamma action on the ship conformal blocks defined on the covered curves of G will then take you full push forward and invariant give me something which is comparable to the shift conformal blocks which I defined in that way. Because this is not how yeah. yeah, taking invariant doesn't behave well with quotient things, so it's it's just not doesn't work very well. Yeah, so <laughs> there is no map that we can actually work with. Thank you very much. Thank you.